Okay, welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for March 20th. Um, the first item on the agenda is a vacant board member seat process. Um, just for the information of the public, uh, Carrie O'Connor resigned for uh, personal reasons. And so we are in the process of getting a replacement for her. And the way the process works, um, Mrs. Wright found out all the information. Um, basically, we send out a notice to the community on all kinds of, um, of websites and different press. And I've got a list for you all. She's got a list for you there. Um, well, I've got it right here. So at the break, you can take a look at it, make sure everybody's included in it. Um, and uh, this is one of the lists we've had in the past. And so I've crossed off some, we've crossed off some things that we don't think apply. But um, oh, you've got the list there. So if you have any changes, just uh, let let Mrs. Wright know at, at the uh, break of what you think we should put in there, people we should uh, include, and in, uh, or people we should not, for some reason they're in here and shouldn't be. And what we're going to send out to the, the to this list, and which is mostly newspapers and uh, media outlets, is a statement. And at the same time, we're asking for uh, someone to serve on the Board of Education. We also need to get three new members of the Ethics Committee. We have had the same Ethics Committee for the last, I don't know, 10 years probably. And according to our handbook, we're supposed to do it a lot more often than that, change them out. Um, so we're reestablishing re our Ethics Committee. And um, so we're going to read out to uh, the Queen Anne's County Board of Education is looking for county citizens to fill a seat on the Queen Anne's County Board of Education and three vacant seats on the Ethics Committee. Anyone interested in filling the vacant seat on the Board of Education is encouraged to apply through the Governor's Appointment Office website. And we're providing a link on our Queen Anne's County Public School website. If we're going to run this um, opportunity for people to apply from March 21st to April 21st. So they need to, or they can search the web uh, under Governor's Appointment Office. It's appointed by the Governor when it's an interim uh, appointment. The person will fill the job until we have a new election and then we'll um, re replace or that person could run for election. Those interested in filling vacancies on the Ethics Committee are encouraged to send a letter of an interest and a brief resume to, and we have a, a website down here, or an email address, ethicscommittee at qacps.org. Or they can send a mail to Mrs. Wright, and the address of the Board of Education is here. And any questions, Mrs. Wright has provided her phone number here at work. Any questions about that? Okay, next item is the school board retreat days. Um, we've had on the calendar a while that we were trying to arrange a retreat for us um, to, to collaborate as a team. Um, right now we have a, we're try, I'm trying to limit some of the meetings because we're getting killed with meetings. Um, and, but we do need a full day of a retreat. So what we have is we have the current retreat we do once a year, which isn't really a retreat, but it's a it's an event we have at Chesapeake College. Um, all the school boards on the Eastern Shore school boards show up, usually as a group, the full school board. It goes from like 8.30 to 3 in the afternoon. They have guest speakers, and it, and they provide lunch. There's some some uh, businesses provide lunch. And it's a really nice event. Gets it gets us to be able to do something outside and gives us some good information for the future and also to be able to look meet board members from the other boards. It gives us a chance to talk to their bo other boards about things that they're dealing with and issues like we have. That is scheduled and has been on the, been on the schedule for June 17th for a long time. Um, it's after school is let out, hopefully. <laughs> <Going on. laughs> Probably hopefully now it's just rain. So, um, so that's on June 17th, and that's all the superintendents and their boards. So it's, it's a nice event. Um, so if, if you're... It would be great to have our whole board attend that if they are available. Um, so then the retreat we want to have just for our board. I've, just, I've talked over a superintendent and decided to move that later so that you're not crammed in with too many all-day meetings, particular for those who work and have to take leave when they um, when an event. For our new board members. Yeah. Right. So that's what I was thinking. We can go. We were thinking of maybe doing it 
either late summer or early in the fall after schools started and settled and then have our retreat and see where we go from there. So if that's okay with you all, I'd like to put that off until then. We may come up with a nice a nice program. Um, we're, we're still talking about how we're going to do that and uh, and just to make that more effective. And, and like Tammy said, when everybody's here, it's probably a good idea. So if you're all okay, I'll okay with that, I'll, we'll move that to uh, later in the fall. Are you okay with that, Tammy? We don't have to vote. Okay, the next item is the uh, superintendent's evaluation tool. My question for you, I forgot to brief ahead of time. Do you think they all of them need to be there? Or is this something that maybe just we could work out? It's not secretive or anything. But no, it's not a secret, but I appreciate that in light mm -hmm. of their time. Right. So they certainly are free to go forward and do whatever you need to do um, in terms of meetings or, or work that you have to do. If you like to stay, you are free to do that either way. Can I make a recommendation since they're already here? Mm -hmm. Why don't we do the closed session? I mean, just to can't, facilitate. Um, we can't change it this yet. Oh, okay. Oh, and I forgot to approve the agenda. I just want to forget to. Yes. But I, I think you would. I'd, I'd like to just move through and get through this. I've only planned about fifteen minutes for that closed session. Is that all you need for the closed session, right? So that's just going to be only about fifteen <coughs> minutes. So, okay, it's okay with you. I'd like to just stay where we are, and we'll just call them. I imagine we'll call them right around one thirty to come back, and then we'll go. We'll do our closed session right here. We're not going to reconvene for the. To, to close out it, it's not required based on our our OMA training we just got. So okay, so how about we see you guys back around one thirty then? Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. But if you want to listen in on this, this is fascinating stuff. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought you might be interested. Yeah. In it. yeah. <laughs> okay, so to start this off, this is. Um, Looking really forward to us doing this and getting it completed. Get time to swing by. Just to review, we're working on an instrument for the evaluation of the superintendent. May I interject real quickly? And sure. Ask a question: Why are we not doing this in closed session? It's not really necessary. We're not. We're not dealing with personal things that that the superintendent does. We're developing a tool. A tool. Okay, I, I just yeah. want clarification. Yeah, that's all. We're just developing a tool okay. um, to use for evaluations. So enough, this is, should be done in public so they know okay. how we're doing it. Yeah, I didn't tell you we had changed that from closed for that reason, Tammy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. we, we had a great, great training with that OMA. I learned a lot and reviewed a lot of things. So hopefully we can get every person attending that. Open Meetings Act training because it makes a lot of sense and uh, learned a few extra tips from what we used to do or don't do and things that we've done too much of. So, so basically, um, creating on the on the instrument, the, the superintendent is is a vital part of this discussion. Um, I need for her to to participate. We need her to give us guidance. One thing we don't want to put down so much stuff that it's impossible for her to do it. So she's the best judge on that, you know. Him now she, or her. Him, yeah, him or her, right. I'm just talking for her currently. But yeah, this is, we want to develop this so we can use it for any superintendent. Um, that's the goal. And um, so, but we need their input. Now they don't, they can't tell us what kind of instrument to use or what to put in here, but uh, but they are part of the decision processes, the, the, the what ifs and how can we do this kind of thing. Sure. So that we're all operating together. On Absolutely, and I agree, and, and it's, I think I'd be able to offer some feedback as to um, the practicality of some of those so that you have some ideas of what we have and what we do in the district so you can make some decisions, you know, about what indicators go on this tool. Um, if, if I may, I have a couple of documents that I think might be helpful for the discussion when you're ready for me to distribute them. So you yeah, just let me know. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. I just mm -hmm. make complete mm -hmm. this. this the, what we ended up made, making a decision, we, we got some uh, tools from different counties and based on input from you all on the board, um, you wanted to, you, you liked Alleghenies and Wicomico's. Um, Allegheny. Allegheny and Wicomico, that we had Baltimore, we had a whole bunch of different ones. Um, so I combined the Allegheny and Wicomico with the key points that you all mentioned to me that you thought were 
were the good parts of those um, instruments. Combine them into one process here, one, one instrument, trying to pull together your ideas and pull together what I think would apply to our district. Um, so this is, this is going to be a new tool um, and because we have a, I'm sorry, I'm going to clear, go back. We have a contract for the superintendent. And in that contract, we had specific dates that we had to meet. And in that contract, it was, there were dates required for in January. There were dates of things we had to do by September. These things did not occur. Um, so we stopped and we're starting fresh. So the first page I provided you is a draft of the evaluation process dates that we use from here going forward. So ordinarily she would be, we would do this beginning of this in September, but since we didn't, obviously we're behind. So she's going to have about um, four or five months to to meet the requirements we have today. But I have looked at her goals that she set way back and tr we've tried to, and I've tried to accommodate those things in there. So along the way, she's been doing them, doing what, what, what's in this instrument. And then she, I'm sure she will let us know if there's some things that she just can't do. And that's kind of what I talked to her about. You know, that's why we need her input. Because I don't want to make something impossible for her to succeed with. So the new, the new um, kind of timeline of what we're doing is that top page, which talks about um, some things we were going to do, we should have. I put ordinarily we would have had a January 31st and then be done July 31st. However, because today is March 20th, we're doing our tool today. The mid-year meeting we're going to have for her is going to be May 15th. And then the end of year is back to July 31st. So and I've, I've laid that out on this page here. And then by September 15th, we'll start over for the next year and we'll go into the, the timeline for her contract. Now our lawyer is going to write up a change to this and try to, you know, that reflects these dates and give them to her. So we have a mutual understanding of the change that we've made just for this year. And then we want to get right back on track. Yes. September, we'll go right back to. Right back to what's in her contract. Sure. Correct. Now, not to say that she hadn't provided. In September, she did her part and provided the goals. And, pardon? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, so, so her part has been being done. It's just been the board that hadn't been responding where we should have. So we're starting fresh and trying to do it right. Um, and now we need to dig in. My thought on this, this is going to be hard, but at least it's just a few of us to go through it. What I'm, I've been toying with what the heck we can do for, uh, for attacking this. And I think the best way to do it is just to go um, performance indicator by performance indicator, one at a time. But if you have thoughts, yeah, please. I'd like to see what the superintendent has to add to this because... Um, you know, I, I'd like to see some fresh eyes on, on this tool. Sure. So what I'm going to provide are some samples, um, and these samples are coming from AASA, that's the Superintendents Association, as well as NSBA, National School Boards Association. And it references uh, standards that are typical. I'm providing you with standards that are um, that are coming from AASA, um, providing you with some description of those um, of those standards, and also within each standard, there are performance domains, just as we have on the draft one. And so, I'm giving you a reference point. So, some other language that might be included for each one of those standards, at, so that we can sort of have something to 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 judge the our draft by maybe get some more ideas, maybe say, okay, this is perfect, it's right on track, this is what I want to measure, or maybe this one isn't quite measurable. So I'm going to forward, I'm going to pass out a several of these documents. So if you just bear with me. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 
It's got several because our draft has seven standards. The one that I'm distributing to you has uh, six. I'm also going to forward to you a checklist uh, from National School Boards Association for that might be helpful as we look at um, the evaluation process. So what am I looking at? We're look, the, I'm you have eight standards on this page here. I'm going to walk you right through. Okay. And then I'm also going to forward to you, just uh, in the event that we get to this, this is the draft uh, goals, my draft goals for this year. Yeah. We can take a look at those. And um, whether or not it's relevant, I think that it is. This is also some evidence, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, evidence of attainment and progress toward meeting the goals that I have provided to the school board last year uh, so that you can have an idea of, uh, of, what we're, of what we're talking about when we talk about how do we, how do we measure attainment toward those goals. So these, that you've got several documents and I can start us at I think the one that's going to be most important or significant for us right now and that is the one that is called Sample Superintendent Domain Standards and Performance Indicators. Now when, when I look at this one side by side with our draft, the first thing I want to see is whether or not we are um, touching on the most relevant standards that are basically acceptable across the county. Um, I do have a document. I'm not sure that I distributed it. I did not distribute I don't think. I do. Yes, I did. I gave you another document that shows you what standards are measured for superintendents across the state. Um, so you've got several things here, but when we look at our draft and we look at um, the sample standards, we pretty much are in alignment. Now we call them some a couple of different things, but we have one for vision, we have a standard, standard one, visionary leadership. While uh, AASA's document didn't call it visionary leadership, they call theirs planning and assessment. But when you unpack that standard, you'll see that there are a lot of the same things that we're talking about. We, our standard two is policy and governance, and AASA also recommends a policy and governance. We have a standard three as communications and community relations. You'll see uh, AASA also recommends communications, community relations. So we're right in alignment there. We're also in alignment for our standard four for organizational leadership, which is captured by AASA. We have leadership and curriculum instruction and assessment, and AASA calls theirs instructional leadership. We have our standard six as human resource management and labor relations. While AASA doesn't have that uh, particular one, there are some items with F as we unpack that can be found throughout the document. And then we have ethical leadership for standard seven. And AASA just terms it differently and they call it professionalism. So right off the bat, we know that we're right in there uh, as measuring, um, attempting to measure the appropriate standards. And if you just want to double check yourself, the document that has the blue chart on it, building and evaluation system, if you pull to the second, if you turn, switch to the second page, and I, I apologize for the small print, but you can see uh, across the country, several states are here, and they show you which standards that they are measuring their superintendent by, and a lot of them um, clearly are the same as, as the ones that we just mentioned for both AASA as well as our draft document. So that's just to confirm that we're basically in, in the right ballpark here. In the front, on the front page of that same document, you'll see some standards, and on this particular one, there are eight standards. Uh, but you'll see that for the most part, they're the same. Human resources is included on this document for standard seven. And there's a little um, d key descriptor, descriptor so that we can understand exactly what that standard is measuring and align that to what we said we want to measure. So we've got a few documents in front of us. And I think what we probably um, need to do is really begin to unpack our standards 
and we certainly can start wherever you want to start. If you want to start a visionary leadership, then we certainly can do that. Um, AASA's document, again, calls it planning and assessment, but we can go right down our list and we can do some comparisons and we can look at the language for measuring these standards. Well, here's a question. Since we have leadership and curriculum instruction assessment, wouldn't that fall under planning and assessment? Actually, not for ASA. That's instructional assess, instructional oh, leadership. So this is planning and assessment is actually... For instruction, okay. academics. No, I'm talking about under this... It's visionary leadership, our standard one. Oh, we, yeah, we have visionary leadership, so we should say she calls it planning and right, assessment. Right, right. Yeah, I, I thought I mentioned that. So okay. it, planning and assessment for AASA is our visionary. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at that AASA document, the last one at the bottom for professionalism, that's what we would consider the ethics standards. Okay. Could we call it professionalism and values? We, we, we can pretty, call it whatever we want. We, we okay. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we can change. So we could start with standard one then. Let's just delve into it. So we'd look at palace planning and assessment to be sure we have incorporated the, the key things. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the performance ratings. Is anyone having trouble with the performance ratings? It, yeah. Okay. You want to add to that? Yeah, that would be what what we yeah. Would you have any changes you've looked at for the performance ratings on number one, and then the indicators is what we're look, we're comparing right now. To, right? Is that what you're saying? Because yes. So the, you've identified if. Um, four ratings, right. categories. Ineffective, needs improvement, effective, and highly effective. Correct. And then in the draft, you've identified some language that would help us sort of serve as a, a rubric almost for what is, what would be considered ineffective, what would be considered needs needing improvement, and so forth for each of the standards. Right. So it's a decision that you want to make if you like the language of these um, ratings categories or if you want to change them. Do you have something that any that you kind of asked that would correlate with this to give us basically for number one? We're just going to look. Well, at I just want to. First of all, I want to set the performance ratings. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not. I'm not going to. I don't have anything that's going to make a change to that. Although some, you know, some performance ratings are uh, sort of ratings scales. So from zero to five or one to five, some say proficient or some say met or not met. So any of those are generally acceptable. Mm -hmm. I don't take any issue with the categories that you, you know, identify here. Oh, yeah, because I think they're, I mean, I like those. I like four. It keeps it a little more simple. And some of them had six. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, it's kind of like. Pulling teeth, which one is separate? And I know in our SIT plans, we always had met and unmet to keep it even more simple. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was trying to get to where we could. Okay. Yeah. You, I, I, think, um, I think, you know, met and unmet or not met um, is a hard line. So, you know, if, if we didn't meet it, if I didn't meet it, then more work has to be done. But we need to say, you know, to what degree? Are we close or we just, I not just do it at all? You know, and that met, not met, doesn't generally capture that. Okay. Okay. And you're okay with the performance readings? It's just that first, first batch of here. Or, yeah, I'm fine with this one. You see that the main, the, right at the very beginning of the, of the, uh, this is for every one of them. It tells what ineffective is, what needs improvement is, yeah. So for good on those, I see what you mean, Tammy. So we can move into the um, visionary leadership one, which is planning and assessment, right? Mm -hmm. And on this, we had, uh, everybody had some concerns on the ethics um, leadership, the seventh standard. So we really did, it's very subjective, so we were going to, we were just going to remove that one because it's way too subjective. It's, it ended up being, well, in the past, it ended up being whether they liked you or not, whether they liked the superintendent or not. And that doesn't do anybody any good. But with this, so, this thing, at, 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 luckily we have this piece of paper from the superintendent, gives us some indicators of professionalism. 
which we could incorporate under that. We could call it ethical leadership and professionalism and apply some of these standards, which would sure. know, correlate that, across yeah. the board. I, well, it, it's starting with visionary leadership, going in here, I'm reading these performance indicators, there's actual tangible empirical data that we can use rather than making it so subjective in, in the indicators that we have. I'm oh, just you mean going this, back and forth. You mean the planning and assessment piece. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So oh. I'm starting with standard one, visionary leadership. If we even called it visionary leadership, planning and assessment, comma, planning comma, and, and assessment, and then applied some more of these indicators here, because I'm what I'm seeing here is reviews and analysis of student academic achievement, provides staff with coll collaborative effort data, plans and implements changes in programs, reviews annual analysis. I mean, that's we that's something that's tangible. Okay. Rather than being so subjective, which was my comment. I, I had all through here, there's no empirical data, there's nothing tangible. I I, I wanted to make it measurable. Immeasurable and not so subjective. That was my whole part about all of this. So mm -hmm. seeing this, I would be glad to incorporate more of this into here and then under our suggested data and documentation, pulling from this, it's just a few things, but it it definitely does help. Am, am I getting off Are you on this no, domain? You, are you on this page here, domain A? I'm under domain A planning okay. and assessment, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So, so some of the um, indicators that uh, Ms. Harper was talking about, she was just pulling from this list of performance indicators yes. here. Mm -hmm. It's just a few more things, I mean, to add, but it, it expands. It, and, and it gives me something concrete to share with you as evidence. Right. So do we present where we are in terms of our strategic plan? Do we share data, district data? Right. Have we disaggregated that data down to the school level? Mm -hmm. Have we worked with schools to uh, improve student performance and, and employee or teacher performance, that type of thing? Here, demonstrates a working knowledge and understanding of the state educational standards. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would think that you know that, but mm -hmm. have you demonstrated the fact that you do? And how do you know? How do you know? Well, mm -hmm. you've talked about Comar during our meetings. You, mm -hmm. you know, you sent out documents to us that, you know, relate back to state law. I mean, that to me would be tangible evidence. Mm -hmm. Evidence. Mm -hmm. I think just in different wording, some of these are already in here. Yes. Under the indicators. Mm -hmm. Implement strategies for inclusive inclusion of staff and various stakeholders. Um, it's it this this would expand um, what you have here, but it would be be able to be measurable. So just to be concise, so where we have on our draft document performance indicators, and we have one point one, one point two, so forth, the document from AASA would say performance standard A one, right, and then give a description for that, analyzing and using data for decision making. Standard A2, uh, it organized collaborative development implementation of a district strategic plan. Um, standard three, so it's, it's still laid out the way that you have, just with more language describing what that standard is. And I'm not saying that one is any better than the other because they basically incorporate some of the same things. Um, it's just a matter of how we would like to uh, word it. Well, it's defining what each of these indicators mm -hmm. would incorporate. So when we get to the next part for the categ ratings categories, we can be more prescriptive with regard to what pieces of evidence are going to confirm that Dr. Kane is effective or highly effective in this stand with this standard. So the word standard is a little confusing because they're using domains and there's standards all over the domains. So right, and that's just the without having to read yeah, the organization. Read, yeah, right. I don't want to have to redo the whole thing. Right. But I mean, and I don't think you need to. I think that having standard there is the right is the, is the right thing. I think that's you know the right order. Even if you even if you broke it down and and said that we're going to call these indicators standards right and these indicators. Mm -hmm. Correct. Then we're still we're still getting to, we're still to using what the you, same thing. Exactly. But then under 1.1, collaborate develops and implements a shared vision and mission. Pull from here, 
and just do bullet points of what that encompasses. So, you know, you're just, that it's just explaining, because we, when we're not the long, no longer the board, people coming behind us mm -hmm. need to be able to understand what the document means. Okay, I got it. If we kept mostly the format we have, is what you're saying. But oh, absolutely. So we've got these performance indicators. On. Say number 1.1, 1. 1, performance indicator, just what you said. So what are we doing to that? You're comparing. Okay, so it de imp develops and implements a shared vision and mission. Over here, superintendent plans, implements, supports, and assesses structural programs. Quite a few of these things would relate to this. I'm just, I just would like to have more bullet points on here to understand what that indicator is asking. For. Oh, so you're talking about the bullets under suggested data and documentation. Yeah. Well, okay. No, 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 no. No. For indicator. Yeah. But I mean, where are the bullet points you want? Where do you want to put them on ours or how you? Sure. Okay. The indicators. Mm -hmm. Are we working on indicators? Mm -hmm. Just this part. So, mm -hmm. if these are your indicators, mm -hmm. these are the bullet points. So, so they're reflected they're, under no, 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 this. no. They're under here. So these these indicators, collaborative develops and Im implements a shared vision and mission, would correlate to, say, standard A three on this document, and it would just it would just expand what we are going to, and just these bullet points under here. So you still have 1.1, and then 1.2 would have, you know, the indicators, the bullet points would be the feedback, implements and plans achievement goals. Here's effective resources, and then more bullet points. It's just explaining what we're looking for in those indicators. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's just, at, it's just, it's, it's giving more substance them. to what we're looking for. Because we may not be, when we're not here any longer, these people coming behind us need no, to know. Yeah, I, I agree. I just don't know how we can well, manage that. It's, it's a daunting here. document, but it, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm going to apologize that all these years we have never done a, a valid student uh, superintendent evaluation in all these years. So now we're doing it. And it just takes time. So what we could do is if if and you need more time I get it but what you might be interested in doing is looking at some of these indicators deciding if there are any that you like that are just as they are written and then if there are ones that you want to include that are in our draft or if there are others that you want to make sure once you decide you can circle you can you know all of that kind of thing right. we can get somebody to um, you know, together. get it, mm -hmm, get yes. it put together. So that's not a burden on you because that is, that's okay. just way too much. Mm -hmm. So if, if we have the notes on what it is that we want to include, then we'll get it organized and, and typed out. Okay. okay. I feel about that now. No, no, no. But again, this shit has empirical data behind it. Agreed. On these indicators. And I, I love this. I, I'm so the best way to work through this is to do one point, like go 1.1 1 .1 and then pick things out that apply that maybe are not. And then just right next clear. to it where they would go. And and say per, yeah, like this goes with 1.1. 1 .1, and, and then it's a matter of copy and paste at exactly. that point. Exactly. Um, so, first of all, are there indicators that we already have on the draft that we're looking at, Captain Kelly mm -hmm. gave to us? that we want to keep under performance standard number one yes so those performance indicators mm -hmm. at the bottom of the page um, were there any that you all had omitted I actually added one what was that well, I added one um, which was plagiarizing off of your goals um, <laughs> the uh, Embracing a philosophy that leadership practices be guided through the lens of equity mm -hmm. and a strong belief that all of our students can achieve at high levels. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a visionary leadership. That would be under shared vision and mission, wouldn't it? That would be under 1.1. 1. 1. 
Yep. It would. I'd so put, so, what it, I, so I was going to say I'd the put same. Put it right under that. I was going to say. Emphasize. I was going to say your one point. The one point one that's on this document is is a good one. The only language I would propose that we think about is every superintendent doesn't need to develop a brand new vision. And my question was there. Yeah, so, so but AASA gives us some language and says provides leadership in the development of a shared vision, but it also talks about uh, managing. Uh, let me go back to where I saw that. Strategic plan to attain that vision. It's in this first paragraph. I think that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. It was. It was. Okay. It broke it out so that you're not always um, developing, right. but okay. you could. Prov you know, you could provide leadership in implementing, um, in monitoring, and those kinds of things because you're not always going to be developing a new vision. Right. And we do have that. In, that's where we have it. Mm -hmm. we so can, I had a question here on mine was to take out the word develop. It just says collaboratively implements a shared okay. vision and mission. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree with you on that. I, that was the first thing I wrote down. So, should we highlight it and then put the number next to it? Is that what you want to do? Is that how, in order to not sure how we went? Through, we well, what I was just that. doing was... I was thinking, I'm just going to put a check next to our 1.1. I crossed out the wor the two words develops and so that it reads collaboratively implements a shared vision and mission. Okay. And, you know, and then, we, could, we could do more to that if you want, um, but we'll still have to talk about the evidence of that when we start looking at that rubric on the mm -hmm. next page. But... You know, it's my opinion that that's appropriate, definitely, to have in this evaluation. If I take tool. this document and highlight it, and then put bullet point one, one point one. Sure. That way, this document can be used to. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we're, but I think we're good with the wording on one point one. Yeah. And I then just, cross off the first dot, so we don't need to add that in. Okay. Is what she's saying because it says the same thing, right? Shared Keep vision. Going. Okay. Providing so leadership. You don't need to have a bullet point on that. No. Okay. That first bullet under performance indicator under standard A2, you're saying, right? Yes, I yeah. still think. Is to cross that one off, because we don't need a strategic plan to attain the vision. We already have that. Well, it's here, maintain stakeholders focus on long-range mission and goals throughout the implementation that process. A3? Right here. No, it's A2. It's the last one. Under okay, A2. so I'm going to highlight this and then put 1.1. That way it would be a bullet okay. point for that particular. Okay. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That way we have a dot we have something for them to cross reference. Yes. Okay. Thank okay, you. so I see. I'm starting to get the hang of it. <laughs> one yeah. point one is stays where it is written in right. on our uh, form and then that will, will go added. underneath it. Right. Okay. All right. I see what you mean. Like some are there any other bullet points that need to go under that that are not included or is that where we show it into the box of infective or highly effective? I, I think the one up at the top of the, that second column there works collaboratively, collaboratively to develop long and short range goals and objectives consistent with the strategic plan and monitors progress in achieving long and short range goals and objectives. Because while the vision is not the same as the strategic plan, it certainly is absorbed within the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this does mention the strategic plan and allows for some data points for goals and monitoring progress toward those goals. Okay. Well, can we agree that visionary leadership needs to be changed? Standard one needs to be visionary leadership in planning and assessment? Okay. I mean, I just don't know if the word assessment. Uh, assessment indicates not that just visionary leadership and planning. Yeah, I think that might be better because assessment confuses you and moves you into the instructional part of okay. you know a test mm -hmm. or okay. what what shows Was visionary that a, leadership and planning. Okay. But if you're looking at no, I like this, I like what adding you're that. saying. Mm -hmm. Isn't that included in these, some of these? Yeah, it, 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 it sure is. 
Um, so 1.2 collects and uses data to identify goals, assess organizational effectiveness, and promote organizational learning. That that certainly is subsumed in that and that one that I mentioned up at the top. So we could just leave it. All I'm saying because I put down we you know mm -hmm. like your presentations by Dave Brown mm -hmm. basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want that to be 1.2. That's that. So so leave the 1.2 as it is on the draft. Then is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean if that's okay, I, I'm just kind of looking through what we're. We need to. So one point two gets nothing added to it. Correct. Okay. Because I think that covers that. Um, next one provide feedback to principals on goal achievement. Plans and implements changes in programs and curricula based on da data. Uh, A one bullet point. Or fifth one down. Say again, Tammy. I'm, I'm just I'm looking at bullet points to put under here. Creates implements plans to achieve goals. So plans and implements is changes in programs based on on data. And right. then we've got collects and uses data to identify goals. Where's that? Assess the one point two. So you're looking at a bullet point to put underneath there. Yes. Right. Of how you do that. I'm just looking at here to see if there's anything. Maybe that part about um, feedback to principals on goal achievement and needs for improvement. Or the or even the last one it's in 1. that. 5. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh. Um, indicator under A1 develops, monitors, and assesses district and school improvement plans. Yes. Okay. Yes. That would be under 1.3. Mm -hmm. So it's something you specifically do when you get the information on the data. Correct. Okay. But okay. as but also when we do our superintendent monitoring visits, right. we are monitoring data and school improvement. Um, progress. Yes, you're right. Okay. Implement strategies for the inclusion of staff and various stakeholders in the planning process. Would that be under 1.1? Under A2, the second bullet point down? The strategies for the inclusion of staff and various stakeholders in the planning process. Are you, you said, it, would that be equivalent to which one? 1.1. 1. 1. Collaboratively. Vision. Sure. That would be another 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah. Okay, so you're highlighting put 1.1. 1. 1. Yes. All right, I got it. Thank you. Right. Oh, yeah. Supports distribution by identifying architectural plan for educational stakeholders. I mean, all this is good stuff here. Both continuous and sustain and sustainable improvement. So that would be the one provides feedback to principals. Would be one point four. Are you in under A two? Second column provides feedback to principals on goal achievement needs for improvement. But what are you putting that under one two? Uh, under one, one two. point four as part of feedback, continuous and sustainable improvement. Yeah, and I think it's re number 1.3 is repetitious, so I would say we delete that on our draft. Creating and implementing plans to achieve goals. I mean, that's what this is it's all about. It's already in the 1.2? Uh, yeah. I agree right. with that. Okay, so it'll cross up 1.3, our the draft 1.3. Okay. So now we're moved to 1.4. So continuous sustainable improvement, there's that second column, all of, all of those. Feedback to principals. And um, support staff to changes of process. In the stages of change process. Yes. Sustainable okay. development. Okay. I'm sorry, can you give me that one again? Provides feedback to principals on at the second column under A two. Okay. okay. Yeah, but that was for 1.4, right? 1.4, mm -hmm. and then support staff through changes of change process. Support staff through the changes to the stages of change process. Mm -hmm. 
that would be a sustainable. Sustainable improvement, yes. Improvement, okay. So both of these are 1.4. Facilitates programs, curricular changes to meet state and federal regulations. It might be under something else. Let me see. So that probably is instructional leadership. <coughs> okay, 1.1. 1. 1. Um, for a whole other standard, for yeah. standard um, okay. five for us. Okay, which one was that again? Uh, Standard five is leadership and curriculum instruction and assessment. Okay. Oversees the planning, implementation, implementation, evaluation, and revision. So that would be five point. I'm going to put a note for standard five. Five point four. Five point one stands a focus on teaching and learning, overseeing the planning. Have you moved down to standard five there? Yeah, I'm just trying to find a because I like that as a bullet point, but I think it's I think our standards are a little too you keep saying the word designs through here and I think we aren't starting from scratch. For exactly. Courses. I think sustain sustainability here is that I can't find a a standard to correlate it with under instructional leadership, maybe. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Let me see. The right. superintendent oversees the alignment, coordination, and delivery of assigned programs. We could take that and incorporate it into a set of design. But let's, yeah, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so I just made a note for standard five. Okay, I'm going to put it under here. So we're, we're good with the 1.1. We are good with 1.2. We crossed out 1.3. We have some ideas for 1.4 to enhance that one. And so for 1.5, monitors and evaluates progress and revises plans. That's sort of. Okay. Reviews annual analysis of districts, tests, and subscores. Yeah. Uh, that would be Monitors and evaluating. Plans and implement, implements changes in program. I'm all under A1. The, the yeah, I, yeah. Plans and implements changes in programs and or curricula reviews, based on data. And reviews annual analysis. Well, maybe that needs to come out then because one five isn't that in there about implementing? I mean collects and uses data to identify goals and it's all covered under 1.2. So all those could be 1.2 we could just get rid of 1.5? I'm wondering because it looks repetitious to me. Monitoring, evaluating the progress and revising plans. Well, and promote organization, comma, and monitor evaluates progress. Oh, okay. So then so add um, that onto this. Yeah. Add 1.5 to 1.2. Yeah. And then I'm going to take these. Okay. The yeah, bullet points and add it to it. Yeah, because we could just have two two sentences in there. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. So one point five, we're going to add to one point right, two. Just, yeah. Yes, just to say collects and uses the first sentence they have for one point two, and then add in the next sentence, monitors and evaluates progress and revises plans. Gotcha. And then the, w before we go away from that. I really think we ought to have a, some kind of a note in there because of her visionary leadership on the philosophy we're pushing for. And I'd like to do that like forever under the equity lens. Oh, yeah, we need we to go back that to that one. don't have that reflected in right. this at all, this right. evaluation. Right. right. So to me, that's your visionary leader. That's one the case. Of all this here is 1.2. 
all these bullet points in A1 are, would go under 1.2, all the way down until the last one, except for the one, the 1.4. 1. 1. 1. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. this all talks about that data. It all talks about continuous and sustainable the improvement. Yes. Well, maybe the description of that indicator should be 1.1 sentence, then 1.5 sentence, and then 1.4 sentence. Promoting continuous and sustainable improvement. And they all kind of go together in one day. No, 1.4 is definitely different. By, by combining 1.2 and 1.5, okay. there's de definitely a difference in 1.4. So 1.4 would actually become 1.3. Now, this uh, one indicator, standard A4, about effective allocation of fiscal and other resources, where would that fall under this? The organizational leadership. Which one are you looking at? Oh, you're looking yeah, at I'm on, I'm on planning this assessment thing. still. Okay. But their, their performance standard talks about effective allocation of fiscal and other resources. Yes. That's and I don't. Is. I don't know where that would be in here. Yeah, it's organizational it's leadership part. standard four. Yeah. Standard four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, the, right. and then take all these bullet points and put under standard four. Is that what you're? Well, we can we can come back because some of them may already be subsumed in what we already have. Okay. But note that so, this is right. something that we want to. All right. Include. Let me. Uh, yeah. Four point three makes sound standard fiscal four. decisions aligned with strategic goals. Okay. So standard four. I want to just try to identify it before we move on. Absolutely. Because it made sense. So for the one that you want to add, so this will now be a 1.5 because the current 1.5 we put up to 1.2. Right. So oh, and we have a 1.3. Yes. Uh, so so this would be a 1.4. Oh, actually, you're right. Yep. You're what are you talking about 1.4? What is that? I, w I would like to put something in like what she had in her goals of embracing the philosophy that leadership practices be guided through the lens of equity and the strong belief that all of our students can achieve at high levels. So that can be found in the goals document. Right. It is, if you go to the back of the second page right. under B. But how does that pertain to a standard? And how would we measure that? So some examples of evidence that I put I listed were through our equal opportunity schools plans. Um, the one that we're doing to identify students not traditionally um, in advanced level courses. I put down our diversity professional development, recruiting and hiring for diverse candidates, uh, school activities and events, uh, discipline data because that's frequently an area that has a, a significant disparity. Um, my participation in community events, those are the kinds of things. Um, meeting and agendas, minutes, because I include that conversation about diversity and equity in all of our A&S meetings. Um, so Guide me where we are looking. Okay. Sec the back of the second page, you've got your, th go one more page at the top. Mm -hmm. The top, that's the end. So the bullet points would be the emphasis on plans to strengthen inclusive practices. Right. That would be a bullet point. So if you, the last sentence in my description for that goal was evidence of equitable practices will be demonstrated in academic programs, human resources, student support programs, professional development, and discipline, to be specific. The so 1.4 is uh, embrace. Embrace philosophy that leadership practices be guided through the lens of equity. Okay, so if you know all that, can mm -hmm. you just incorporate yep. it? And then the bullet points being also what's in this? I think the bullet point under that would be that evidence, no, right? It, is that what you're would, thinking? It would have one here. Bullet points would be plans to strengthen inclusive practices, bullet point expand access and opportunity, bullet point improve teaching and learning in order for students to achieve, I mean, bullet point and then the evidence would be listed under evidence. But we're going to include that. So these, good point, I'm glad you broke it out like that, could be in the descriptors 
for the ratings categories. So Correct. to what degree, Correct. right? That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And make them the bullet points of the visionary, mm -hmm. the, embracing the philosophy of equity. Right. Isn't that now something that, are they putting that in coma? So they changed it from education that's multicultural to educational equity. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Yeah, we did our training from so May last week. That would be in line week. with that. Yep. I thought I'd read that. And the development of a policy is going is a requirement oh, yeah. for Comar. Mm -hmm. How about policy there you go? go. <laughs> we, we, we're already there. We're already there. Already there. We're close. Yeah, and I've already written up a, not reading a any bullet. Today, kind of. <laughs> Get your quota. <laughs> I can't even. I'm not making light of it. It's got, it had to be done. Yeah. I, I, okay. I did get a, a bullet. Are you good with everything? Like it. No, no. I mean, cool. I just added, I added some bullets. Sorry. Okay. Okay. You can, okay. On that Your one, we'll get to it. Your examples of evidence could also be. So put on your suggestion. All that is 1.5. Yeah. And like I said, that's one thing you're all, you already have been doing. So okay. You know, so I'm going to you've already been doing. This is good. Starting fresh for you. No, it's not. Uh, too hard. Bullet points. So, we, where are we down to on the? Uh, I'm good with uh, standard one. If everybody's. And so, what we need to do is we need to come back through this um, what the makes, rubric. Right. Mm -hmm. What makes effect? And we could align that. So, I've been making some notes. Um, for for some of the indicators that are on the ASA document that we initially may have said yes include that but then we said don't because it probably has some language in it that we want to include in the rubric and also what you just said from the goals document we can include that in the rubric yeah. and so we can just scale it back we can start at highly effective and put all those things that we want to see and then we could just start to scale it back and just to save time we can work on that we'll present it to the board you decide if those if what we've done captures everything that you want or I can leave it to you however you want to do it well I, d I do want to I've I, when I'm developed this I'm mostly looking at highly effective because mm -hmm. I think that's what that's exactly what I'm saying start, we'll at. Yep, start with highly effective put all the things in that that you want to see and then scale back as you go from effective to needs improvement to ineffective. I think I don't, I, I kind of under the standards we have here, ineffective, ineffective, needs improvement, effective, highly effective. Down at the bottom, highly effective. The vision is lively and evident in the culture. I would, I, I, I just don't like the word. Yeah, lively. I don't think you want to see this. this. No. I think what you want to see here is reflective of the changes that we just made. Yes. So what I'm suggesting is that we look, so say for example, what's our first indicator? Our first indicator is collaboratively implements a shared vision and mission. And so I'd go back um, to that one. And so I can say, you know, is includes include staff and various stakeholders in the planning process for, um, you know, strategic plan or vision mission or priorities for the district, that kind of thing. That might be one that we put in here. Another that we might put in here is that um, the superintendent has emphasized plans to strengthen inclusive practices, expand access and opportunity, and improve teaching and learning in um, all QACPS um, efforts or something to that nature. Why are you looking at that? Because I that was the one that came from the goals, the one yeah. that you wanted. Because this whole, this to me is, and I wrote the word fluff. So, so I would rather have something that's, and, and when and when it's when we say it's highly effective, meets the standard, meets right. So you know, my suggestion is that we not use this. that. Yeah. That we not use these and we put in new ones that are related to the indicators that we just identified. Okay. I agree with that. Right? So we do have one in there for vision, you know. Okay. So but but do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Captain mm -hmm. Kelly. So what I was trying to do to save time is say some of these indicators from the AASA mm -hmm. that we initially started talking about was important, but then we sort of cross it off to keep the language, you know, concise here. That's where some of these can fit on to yes. the categories so that we can say, okay, you're highly effective if you have demonstrated these. Yes. Yes. 
yes. And so what my suggestion was, and, and I can leave this to the board or I can have my team to work on it do, just to do some cut and paste. You can share with me if there are any in particular that you want to be sure that are included here at the outset. Um, and then we can type it up and we can let you take a look at it and see if that meets you know, what you're trying to get to. The only to. one that I didn't like was the one on the bottom about the vision is lively. I mean, I would rather it say, you know, repeated efforts are, you know, repeated, d demonstrates, um, you know, continually demonstrates the, you know, the system and the vision. Some, somewhere in there that, it, you know, that you're articulating that to us, this vision is lively. That, that to me is just, you know, I don't, I would take that out. But everything else articulates a clear and coherent vision, exhibits the, this position of a learner, leadership action, staff and resources are clearly aligned with that. I mean, that's it's. I mean, those those seem to me like it's tangible. Yes, I can see that you do this, and I can, and it can be demonstrated in, you know, your um, those three are those. Yeah, makes the, sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. the last one just did it to me. I wanted to add one in there that that supports what we just added on embracing the equity yeah. thing I, too. Yes. I wrote I down establishes programs and training and I think that is students and staff her to yeah, understand. That's what I was saying. Add that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Here. It's mm -hmm. which showing is in your evidence goals. of right. right. And that's right there. So that's perfect. And that goes so that part of your goal will just Okay. So, cool. may I suggest just one other thing? Um, so, because we changed some of this, and some of the um, standard now incorporates using data, um, monitoring, and ensuring that we have continuous improvement in our district, we just need to be sure that that matches yes. this highly effective category. So we want to include those things mm -hmm. in that. That's that's what I was mentioning when I'm saying change some of these to match what we just said was important for standard one. Okay. 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 To match the standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. So, to, you know, for example, exhibits the disposition of a learner, practices, and applies new learning to further the mission is not a part of what we just said. So I would say that that one probably should go, and we probably need to replace that or certainly include that with something that's related to using data, uh, monitoring that data, showing continuous improvement. And what I was suggesting is that I can pull language from the indicators from the AASA document to include in the ratings um, category because then there, that language is certainly measurable. You can, you can measure that. Okay. And you can say whether I've done it or not. Under, so under suggested data and documentation, an extra bullet are we point. Clear, are we clear up there? Oh, um, I'm, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Okay. Um, in order to add to the lens of equity mm -hmm. yeah, for documentation, you know, we'd have to add something down here for suggested da data. Yeah, right. I think I put down the what was on her goals, which is the equal opportunity schools. Uh, and we could say, you know, what initiatives have you taken? Okay, discipline data. So all this examples equity. of evidence could be... We have down... Could be uh, for standards 1.4. So it's 1.4 evidence. Okay. See, I'm just, I'm just making a note that this is evidence for 1.4 mm -hmm. in yeah. this document. Yeah, I'll do the okay. same. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, I like that. I, I think not that I should like it. It just sounds measurable. It sounds closer to what um, Tammy's concern was right. the whole tool wasn't measurable enough. Right. So so she accommodated great start, my desire not to completely throw it out because no, 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 I don't no, want to start it all. fresh. Not no. at all. No. It just need to be to expanded. expand it for more tools. Yeah. And not be so subjective. Sorry, I keep counting on that. It's just my thing. Did you need this? Mm -mm, this is extra. Are we ready to go on standard two? Yep. Policy so. and government. 
governance. So that goes back to uh, Which one there is, is one. Oh, it's in, in the flip it to the other. It's the first one for okay. AASA. Yeah, Mr. Can you certainly uh, feel free to jump in here? Okay. Because <laughs> you're organizational. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what did you say AASA stood for? Um, I, I can't remember specifically, but it is the Superintendents Association. Superintendent, okay. Mm -hmm. Like a national. Yeah, yep, it national is national. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand, okay, performance standard two. Mm -hmm. I understand it's articulated the system of public school government that differentiates between policy making and administrative goals. The second one, 2.2, .2, establishes procedures for superintendent work in a personal and working relationship. The superintendent doesn't necessarily establish the procedures because that's done in each of the different departments. Gone, to, but we just went through, we just went through policy procedures. That's done in the policy committee. But I would say implements proceed the procedures. Are you are you at two point two? Two point two. Yes. yes. Establishes procedures for superintendent slash board interpersonal and working okay. relationships. Two needs to be there. Right. I, I think that it doesn't have anything to do with policies. I think that that is no. um, established in the school board handbook. Administrative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that can go. So then, since that's already all been done, I think it's incorporated in the two point one that you understand articulate to the system the policy. But actually, I think that should be expanded because. Well, basically, that, that whole description is the jobs between who does what, the board or supervisor or a superintendent. Yeah, and 2.4, I think, needs to go away as well because that's a part of the policy making an administrative decision. Which one? No, 2.4. Legal counsel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you, that's a part of the process. Yeah, I put a question mark there. I can yeah. understand what's So can we just ditch 2.4? Yeah. So you got rid of 2 and 4, right? And just expand on 2.1 and the new 2.2 to incorporate. Species, we and have we covered what's in the exactly AA say? Let's mm -hmm. look at that then. Yeah. Quite honestly. Could we just could we just take this and adopt this as our in performance indicators for this particular because this covers everything. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it expands each one of the two point one and two point two into categories that are measurable. Is that allowed? Is that plagiarism? Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes on what? Hey. Yep on what? Yep Change on both. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we need to, um, you know, make the language our own. Okay. Um, by all means. So, I mean, you if can't we pay them to let us. Okay. Well, Sorry. I don't think Sorry. we have to. We're members. I'm a member, so but. they certainly put this out here for Sorry. my use. Um, but okay. what? But I would, you know, change some of the language okay. so that it, you know, really meets ours. And then we have to talk about how do we want to identify that. Do we want to include, I'm be clear on what you are asking, some of these indicators to build the ratings categories, or do you want these indicators to actually be yeah. our performance indicators? Okay. So let me give them a purview on this. Definitely under G1, the third bullet point down, develops administrative regulations yes. that support. That's got to come out. Well, no, that would be, that is what I'm responsible mm -hmm. for. You do oh, policies, you are, I yes, do regulations. Are. That's true. Okay. Well, basically, you're talking about like the first bullet under G1, the first bullet down under indicator. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. would fall under like understanding and interpret the roles mm -hmm. okay. uh, what 2.2 okay. 2.2 yeah, because that is understanding, interpreting the okay. roles of state policies and politics and okay. districts. So, are you saying Point to you use? Are you are you well, saying to use that bullet yes. um, under, under two point two? So, I'm sorry, I didn't now, say this now becomes two point two. Okay. Um, use this one for the ratings category yeah, yes mm -hmm. okay yeah because the the 2.1 that you have here really it captures it but this is one way to demonstrate it right so which which indicator are you talking about so we're talking about under g1 okay. the very first bullet supports and enforces all school board policies and informs all constituents of changes to school board policies that would be a way to demonstrate our 2.1 understands and articulates the system of public school governments and um, differentiates between policy making and administrative roles. I guess that's one way. So to look G1, at it. the first and second bullet points. Is that what you're talking about? I didn't look at oh. the second one. Let me see. Recommends changes to the school board when school board policies conflict with. Yeah, that would certainly articulating and differentiates between policy making. I don't, know, I don't really like that one, that second one. Yeah, I didn't school either. School board policies conflict with the school board's vision. That would I mean, already be a part of it. We're so early in development of policies that... Yeah. Well, that's not even the point. The yeah. Policies are already there. That's what I mean. The policies I mean, should not be part, conflicting. You wouldn't be That's a part of the policy-making process. Especially right. when Comar gets changed, we need to know that. So it's, it's, a, it's fluid. Mm -hmm. It's a fluid action of going over the policy. Yeah, but we not, not, don't have changes because we don't have Supports policy. and enforces all school board policies and informs constituents and changes to the school board to the policies. That's 2.2 .2 right off the bat. What I'm saying is the second bullet under performance. I know what you meant. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think we need that. Right. Because why would, why would you recommend changes to us if a policy conflicts with our vision of education? I mean, you don't you don't even initially create the policy if it conflicts. So, what I interpret this to mean is if we have a policy on the books, let's just take the educational equity policy, right? And so we believe, you know, that we want to give all students opportunities to be, you know, global learners and all those things that our vision says as our board's vision. But now the state has come up with some new language to change the policy that we had in place about equity. Right. And so since the state made a change, we then have to make a change. And it's my responsibility to inform you that now there's a change that is going to conflict with what we believe. Right. Because now is the law. Right. Okay. So that would be a change that I'd need to communicate with you. And we would have to change to cause policy. us to change our policy. Exactly. Okay. But we'd have to change a policy because of state law. Mm -hmm. So it's going to conflict with our vision for education. But, but that's a part of the process. Simply because, if, if for no other reason, because we believe that we are supposed to be in compliance with state and federal laws. Okay, okay. Right. So here's, here's a question. Um, under G3, the administration of school day-to-day -day operations, would that fall under policy and government, governance? And will we make a new bullet point to incorporate that? Well, on the government side, probably. Yes. I, I call it administration, but they call it governance. Right. Here. So would we make that 2.3 and make that, and then all these we'll bullet points that be included? included? We may have included that in here. Do we include that somewhere else? That's what I was checking. You're looking at organizational effect. Organ yeah. organization, <laughs> organizational leadership. Would that be included in standard four? Let's see what we have. Because they have it here under policy and governance. Mm -hmm. Sort of. It's covered sort of. Sort of. So it doesn't, it doesn't talk about the organization. Mm -hmm. Three word 4.1, it could encompass it. Put it there.
that monitors and evaluates the management of operational systems. So you just reword it to day-to-day -day operations. Okay. And then put under four. Where is that? Four. Four point one. Management of operational systems. Just change it, it to yeah. management of day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, it was uh, operate. So change this. It's organizational to leadership, like we said. Yeah, very first one. So said. you want to make four point um, one. I lost it now. Uh, Honors evaluates the day-to-day -day operations. Which one is it? Help me again. Which is it under G three? G three. It's the standard. Oh, the first standard. G3. Okay. All right. Okay. So make this four point one. This, let me show you one thing before, when we were all done with that, we got that. Um, the one we were well, just working on before, under the, um, this thing. Five, okay. <laughs> Where Planning and government. Yeah, where we, I just don't, I don't like this, um, this conf one. conflicting with the school board's vision for education. It's just don't it, when you describe it to me, it's just conflicting with current school board, um, we can change this. There's so recommend changes to the school board you when school board policies conflict with, um, I don't know, higher, higher, you know, you're talking about the state coming up with something different. Does it con nothing will conflict with our vision for education. I don't really understand that. But how you described it Conf means um, when changes say, occur or right. well, when changes are required from... Um, I like that um, because it leaves it open because sometimes it's a state thing and, and sometimes it may not be. So develop, it could be because we are changing our procedure for the way we do something. Okay. So oh, okay. recommends changes to the school board when school board policies um, require changes. Are we back or, on policy and governance? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah, Thank something you. like that. It mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do with vision of our okay. education. I, I, I think. So I won't say conflict. So are we, yeah. are we adding anything from So this? for that second, so G1, the second bullet that we have been talking about before, uh, recommends changes to the school board when school board policies require revision. So that's it, yeah. When school board policies require, require revision. revision. Thank you. And what, where are you putting that under? We already had that going under. Point uh, one. We had it going under. Uh, I'll go back. So two point one. Okay. What was it? What was it? Two point two. Understanding, interpret the roles. Okay. In the relationship. We may have actually created a new two point three. Kane, I have this like this. So okay. Okay. Keep doing yours. Okay. Because I'm making little notes okay. for myself to okay. remember certain things. I'm just so. I'm making and it clean. That, that'd be awesome. Okay. Where did we put that? I'm sorry. Where I thought it was 2.2. We had said 2. that we were, and we said that we were going to include that language in the rubric. Oh, we can put it in the rubric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is going to go in the, in the rubric rather than as a bullet point. Right. And, it, and it would support 2.2. Two. Okay. Right. Okay. Support 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Because I think one of the keys to this thing is the roles and responsibilities of the superintendent as opposed to the board. And that's... That's key to success in our school system. Mm -hmm. One of the keys. All right, thank you. That was phenomenal. So what have we covered under? So I think what we did was we sort of got off and we found one that we wanted to put under standard okay. four. So now we can go back then to standard two. Are there any other performance indicator of the bullets that you want to be sure we include in the ratings category for the rubric? for standard two, policy and governance. Some of the suggested uh, data documentation down here needs some work, only because I, I don't see how it
correlates with, I mean, it's evidenced at meetings, evidenced through, you know, communication to the staff, evidenced through communication to the parents. You, you know what I mean? So it's tangible. Demonstrates tact when offering recommendations. I'll say that. This, yeah, that's, that, that's a part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Even uh, responds directly and factually to the school board. It yeah. sounds like an ethics thing. Yeah. Those are those soft skills. They right. are yeah. definitely. <laughs> They're hard skills when you're butting your tongue like this. Like yeah, because those go into wishing well, nice actually, to me. That, yeah. would under, that would go under professional ethic leadership and professionalism. Yeah, both of those would. Okay. If we Rocking want it. that included. All right. So you think about that one. Standard seven, was it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, part about a sta um, involving the staff as necessary when planning and demonstrating professional and personal skills which facilitate staff involvement. I don't know if that's policy and governance as much as it's um, professional leadership. Yeah, um, it's a leadership section on that. ethical leadership and professionalism. So you right. stuck under there. I think, it's, no, I think it's organizational leadership. Which one are you? Oh, having? Okay, G four, um, G two. Oh, okay, because G four, there's a lot of that in. Our standard four as well. Okay, it's standard four. So, so which See, one are we? I'm seeing this one here, G two, mm -hmm. responding. Not that one. I'm sorry. I was looking at. I'm sorry. I got my involved staff. Yeah, the beginning and first, first and second one. bullets talk the about involving one. the staff. One and two. Those two bullets. Uh -huh. Okay. I think they fit better okay. under uh, organizational leadership. Okay. I mean, it should. Uh, I okay. didn't read that yet. Um, so managing the day-to-day -day ops. Uh, wait a minute. That's not the one. Promotes. It's a type of leadership. Maybe it's leadership and curriculum. Uh, Four point one. As far as monitoring, evaluating, management of day-to-day -day operations, you're including the staff. Maybe that fits. Is there? I don't know anything in here about managing the people. I don't know where it is. Well, that could be it. It seems to be kind of going with 5.6. Promotes the effective and appropriate technologies and educational programming to support teaching and learning. You need their input to do that. Where's this at? This G2 involves staff as necessary in planning, providing recommendations to the school boards. Okay. It would fit under a couple of them. Yeah. It under, uh, also fits under 4.5. Ensuring that non-instructional staff are focused on their role to support quality instruction and student learning. Mm -hmm. And that could be one of the Highly effective things too. We're looking at these well, two. To demonstrate the professional skills would definitely be under. It, it would be something tangible to measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would think under organizational leadership, performance standard four. Okay. We have a description down there under 4.5 about ensuring this is this is focused, I think, on the central office. So that's the second bullet point here. Under demonstrates professional and personal personal skills. Just and that would be probably in the block for what makes you highly effective. In the block. In the block. So yeah. 
a new rubric. So the second bullet demonstrates professional personal um, skills. Put that in the rubric. The rubric okay. for, for performance standard four, which is organizational leadership. Okay. Uh, I, I also I recommended 4.4 proposes under performance standard G4 proposes improvements to school facilities which increase public confidence and trust that schools are safe and effective learning environments under 4.4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what 4.4 is. Okay. So I, I okay. in uses technology to enhance. You said that. Um, Where's that, Tammy? Which one you just read? Okay, G four. Mm -hmm. The second bullet point down proposes improvements under four point four, protecting the wealth and welfare and safety of students and staff. That would also fit under one of those rubrics. We're talking about this one here under four. We just be a bullet point to this one here. The second one, make it going uh, under four in the rubric. I think or four point four. Four, yeah, I think she put it in the rubric. So proposes four. improvements to school facilities, in which rubric. increase public confidence and trust that schools are safe. That sounds okay. like a rubric thing. Okay, to me, is that okay. to you too? Yeah. So that would be so standard four rubric. Okay. Yeah. Right. So where you said 4.4, 4, did you, do you want me to scratch that? No, I'll just put it in the rubric. Yeah, okay. just in the rubric. It supports 4.4. 4, yes. So that's what we're trying to So going back to policy and governance, are we, are we clear with that one? Is that good? Let's just take a look at when it. Yeah. about tech. Um, ensure safe, secure schools for all students and employees. That's in somewhere in the future. Well, that would be that would actually be in the rubric rather than right the bullet point. How do you demonstrate that you ensure that? Correct. Just by her the drills that she does, and that would be under dad um, the suggested data and documentation. They do regular drills. That's where I say lessons learned. I wasn't sure of your question on that. Um, it, it was mentioned. I, yeah, I, I it was mentioned. actually mentioned one of these. It was like I haven't seen one. So, so I need ensure to see safe it. in schools. That would be under day to day operations. Um, Four point one. Actually, this thing had it somewhere unusual. Or under 4.4. Yeah, it's under four. It's under the four. Of okay. I I haven't seen that either, and I'm I guess as a question for Sid too. When we have these drills, <clears throat> okay. Wait a minute. You know, that is not words that stay focused. It's not a part of what we're doing. Talk to him about that later. It is part of it because it it's one of but, the it's one of the standards here. But we're um, talking about the superintendent. That's she's talking about a system wide. No, but it's system wide when they have the drills that they create lessons learned, which is which is what I had was trying to put into one of these documentations mm -hmm. lessons learned. So that next time you do it it's better. You know, you've incorporated. Does the superintendent learned. communicate the data retrieved from fire drills mm -hmm. to make changes and, and current regulations or current procedures? It changes. So is that how you'd say be, that? Be, mm -hmm. Because we report all that to the state, it, ours is sound, what we do, and we report what we do. So we, I don't need to make any changes. Our plans are, are fine with the state, um, mm -hmm, 100%. Um, so implement changes based on data. I, I think maybe what we're getting at here is when we have in a, a, a situation, we have a bomb threat at mm -hmm. a school. What have we learned from that? Right. That that's that's what you're getting at. Mm -hmm. yeah, we call I, it a hot wash. You all call it a. I call it a lessons, lessons learned. Right. And so, what's the intent? Help me understand the intent. What are you What are you Have, asking? Them? Are we doing that in support of keeping the school safe? Well, absolutely. Which, There's conversation. It, it has, is currently not necessarily documented unless we're with, um, you know, law enforcement that something needed to be changed in our processes, but our processes are sound. So 
you know. Okay. What it says here is ensures all schools have through thorough current crisis management plans that are exercised on a routine basis, yeah. incorporating lessons learned at the end of the drill. So for me to assess that, I would actually have to see the lessons learned in the plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is so, that? Is that available to us? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And if I can just jump into that, yeah. one of the things you're going to see in the new proposed indicators, there's a whole indicator on school safety and security, and there's a whole sub a goal rather, and there's an indicator that will say 100% of plans that are complete. There's a piece in there about improvement um, to safe and security. So there's seven or eight different indicators that you're now going to see that we'll report on annually. Okay. So okay. I think that will fit to will fit. answering your question right. on evidence. Right. Does a superintendent be. and staff? Because part of this plan would include you have to have so many drills per year. You have to do Correct. this. Correct. Okay. Which we're required to by Is law. Is that being monitored? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was perusing another document to see if there's anything that we're missing with this policy and So, Mrs. Morissette, just to just to reiterate, I'll give you some examples. You know, 100% of our this will be an indicator. 100% of our schools and offices and complex have emergency plans that are complete. 100% of those schools meeting sister requirements for emergency plans and drills. A uh, number of a percent of employee unit groups trained in active assailant. So those will give you some ideas of some indicators that we'll report. We're already doing that anyways. We just haven't formally put it in an indicator. Okay. Well, the other place we had security was under community relations. I thought that was interesting. Um, and that's our next book. Can we move on to that? Oh, yeah. Standard. Okay. Or yeah. Everybody I'd good with like to try and two? Everyone's good with two then? Mm -hmm. Our standard, our standard two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we'll move to uh, performance standard three comms and community relations. And that one is. Is, uh, same thing. Domain C on this other form. Where do you get these letters from? Just wondering. Um, this domain this is part of a, a much larger document that I will share with you by a, uh, a huh. link. I know, but it was a lot. So it was like 44 okay. pages. So. Okay. Just watch. If you had the whole document, you could see the context. Okay, all right. <laughs> and it would also have explained how they come up with each group C1, C2, C3s of those standards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so C1. Trust and teamwork. Just. that we just uh, did in the policy committee it's changing the word oral to verbal and I see in here that it uses acceptable written and verbal language um, I, I would like to make it uniform across here anytime that we see the word oral that we put verbal as a more acceptable use of the word yeah so we've got we've got verbal here if we should come on 
something that says oral will make that change. I, I like in, in the in, in the performance standard C3 down here in the bullet points, promotes multicultural awareness, gender sensitivity, and appreciation of diversity in the community. But how would you be able to uh, evidence that? It's knowledgeable about the laws regarding individual group rights. Again, how do we? Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that that absolutely is part of, and part of that is tied into our equity work. But this being knowledgeable about the laws uh, regarding individual group rights, that uh, it's Title Nine. Um, those are things that we do have in policy, and we have procedures that require. So, would so. that correlate to community community relations, or would that be under ethical leadership? Well, I understand why they have it here because I think that their focus is on group rights and responsibilities as it relates to community relations. Okay. Um, so I get why they have it here. And and I would say in this context it's appropriate. Because if you start if you look up at that standard C three, it talks about collab working collaboratively with staff, families, community members to secure resources and support the success of a diverse student population and that group rights would be a part of that. So that would be under promote stakeholder trust, involvement, engagement, and processing. I'm looking at 3.3. Uh huh. So you're saying those last three bullet points? Process of schooling through regular and transparent communications. Let's just go and look at all of them. So, you know, I would think that fits more into performance standard 7, 7.3 safeguards and values of democracy, equity, and diversity. And, and there's nothing to say it doesn't fit in both places. It, it, exactly. <laughs> That's true. But do you need to be repetitive? No. Because when you're doing it for one place, you know, you're doing it for another, mm -hmm. so. And as to not skew the score. As right, because the point is, am I evaluated, more. am I being evaluated on that because we think it's important? Is anyone who is further down the road going to be evaluated on what is or is not acceptable? Or, or is continuing the practice? Right. And as long as you have it in there at some point, then. Okay, so models, promotes. Are we putting that under community or? So we're on C3, right. bullet three, right. and you also mentioned bullet four. Models and promotes multicultural awareness, gender sensitivity, and appreciation of diversity, knowledgeable about the laws, individual and group rights. Are you trying to put that under where, Timmy? Well, um, I think that's what you're asking. Oh, okay. so yeah, under professionalism place. or under... I was just saying under promoting stakeholder trust, involvement, engagement, uh, transparent communication, 3.3. Uh, or do we want to make that more, more highlighted under something like our professionalism? Because it goes all over the... Again, that's what, you, what throughout. Mrs. Morissette was just bringing up. Do yeah. we make it a community issue or do we make it ethical leadership issue. Correct. I, I would think more like ethical leadership personally because you can't tell the community what to do. I mean, no, this isn't about the, no, not telling them what to do. It's just communicating to them that you understand the rights of the, you understand the laws and the rights of individuals, um, group rights and responsibilities. Just, just letting them know. And, and, and I think it's under community relations because this is talking about working collaboratively with these groups, understanding that there are rights right. um, afforded to these groups and that, you know, that I, I, I can appreciate the diversity of the group, first of all, and that the superintendent can um, work collaboratively with that group, those groups. Okay. So I'll leave it at 3.3. So that'll go in the rubric. Is that what you're saying? Would you like that to be the rubric or would you like that to be a bullet point? Promote stakeholder trust, involvement, and engagement. I, I think um, it applies, but the point here is that we're talking about multicultural, and this 3.3 .3 doesn't necessarily okay. capture that. Um, so make it as part of the last one? It's part of 7.3? So 
oh, part of what, 3.6? Oh, is that what you're saying? Point seven. Point three. Oh, oh, so you're talking about seven. standard seven. seven point three. Safeguards the values of democracy, equity, and diversity. Okay. I can curb it up. So I, was just I think we community. needed a little more meat into that. Cause, okay. Cause, in particular because it is one of our key priorities right now. Right. Is, is that. Equity and diversity. No. Okay. Okay, good. So that, I think you're right. I think it fits better here. So are we, we're going to include this in the rubric to support 7.3. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything in here in communication and relations under in this document that allows us to have bullet points here. Um, maybe I'm missing something. Well, wage at 3.2, doesn't that <clears throat> support just the very first bullet, promoting climate of trust and teamwork within the district? We could even say with the district and the community. Which, where are you? C1. Okay. C1. C1. Three, the first bullet under 3.2, we talk about demonstrating effective communication. Not that, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's promoting stakeholder trust, involvement, and engagement in the process through communication. And then we're saying we're promoting a climate of trust and teamwork within the district. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could elaborate mm -hmm. that and say within the mm -hmm. district and the community. Mm -hmm. I think that does support. So you want to use it in the rubric or you want to change that to the indicator? Yeah, that may be trouble separating those two. So, yeah, you're right. So pr promotes a climate of trust and teamwork. You want that to be a stand an indicator? Um. Are you making like sub indicators, right? I'm doing well. I w yeah, I was thinking because this, this as we have it in our draft, promotes stakeholder trust, involvement, and engagement in the process of schooling through regular and transparent communication. We, I thought we had talked about or had mentioned um, communication someplace else. Let me see. Formal techniques to gain effective communication skills, such as effective community relations, which is the role of media. It was communicates with appropriate stakeholder groups. Under C2, the second bullet on the second column communicates school and district goals, objectives, and expectations to stakeholders. It's pretty much saying the same thing. Same, it does say the same thing. And this is clear. Um, so would you want to use that one as an indicator or talking about C2, the second bullet point on the second uh huh. And that be the indicator rather than than which one? Number one, three point three. Oh, three point three. Okay. That one doesn't talk about the trust like the other one does, and transparency. But you can add that yeah. to it. Communicates school and district goals, ob objectives, expectations to stakeholders to ensure public trust. Trust and welfare. To ensure public trust and, and involvement. Do you know where that I'm thinking that trust one under just thought C one the first two bullet first two bullets uh -huh. would fit under this Establishing effective school community relations and school business partnerships. 3.4. And under that, it would be promoting a climate of trust, facilitating timely communication. Where's that? Um, and maybe even C1, the third one. The first and second bullets. C1, okay. maybe even the third one. Initiating. Um, All under 3.4? Under 3.4. Okay. What do you think? I think that. Initiates. Did you, are you saying the third one too initiates communication yeah. and facilitates okay. cooperation. cooperation among staff regarding well among staff no I meant among the community so the first two support right. three point uh, four. four okay 
So just to go back just a little bit, are we saying keep 3.1 in our draft? So develops formal and informal techniques to gain internal external perceptions of the district? And I, I, I added a word into that to say to gain positive internal and external perceptions of the district. We're going to have perceptions, but I want to force them to be positive. Do we have anything to support that is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I'll see too. It can be your word. I don't think develops is a good word. I think maintains. Establishes and maintains. Establishes so, and maintains. Just like yes. C2 is worded. Yeah, establishes and maintains formal and informal techniques to, to gain, to maintain, maintain positive. positive internal and external. Okay. So take out develops and make that establishes and maintains formal and informal techniques to gain, to ensure positive yeah, that's internal and external perceptions rather than the word gain, but ensure. Gotcha. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Right. And that is an I-N-S-U-R-E or E-N-S-U-R-E. Thank you so much. <laughs> E-N. <laughs> e. Preference. Preference. All right. Uh, demonstrates effective communication skills. We're keeping that right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Verbal and nonverbal. Mm -hmm. Formal and yes. Promote stakeholder trust. Did we say we were going to keep this one? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Establishes effective. And we said we were keeping 3.4. We have a couple of items from the root to add to the rubric. Understands the role of media in shaping forming opinions as well as. Media so there's. <clears throat> if we look at. Uh, I think it's C2. Let me make sure. Can that I ask, uh, 3.4, establishes effective school community relations. Again, establishes and maintains effective school community. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can definitely establish it, but maintaining it is a trick. And I think it's an interesting comment here they've got is establishing a culture that encourages responsible risk-taking <laughs> while requiring accountability for the results. Yeah. That's kind of a tough one. Yeah. That's like mm -hmm. make them on. take risks, but well, don't they? That's like going to your stockbroker and saying, here's, you know, five grand, go put it, but in a but don't risky lose it. business, I but risk don't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're, this you is, know, that's a tough, yeah, that's a your, tough order right there. It's on you. And how no. do you teach that to you a child? Pay me back. Very, very hard teaching that to a child. You. No, we won't be using that one. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay. Let alone, how do you teach that to a superintendent? <laughs> how about that? Well, I'm expecting jump, don't jump. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to well, figure that out, girl. Let's be honest. Right. <laughs> we're, we're we're taking we're we're actually looking to the future in this this virtual academy. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's a it's a leap of faith. Um, an excellent tool, which I agree. You know, other districts are using it. Um, but again. You know, yeah, but to hold you accountable for something that we haven't yet implemented, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. you know it's, mm -hmm. it's daunting. Yeah. So there we, there's a perfect yes. example. But it's risk taking. Yeah. yeah. It is risk taking. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. it yeah. I mean, but we have to do it in order yeah. to establish to. a baseline and see where forward. the improvements are. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, we're digressing. I think it's I'm kind of exciting. Good. It's all good. I'm good with everything else if everyone else is. Mm -hmm. How, how will, let's see, how will we measure 3.5? Understands the role of media. Yeah, I... I we were in... in huh? I'm suggesting for a change in language on that one. Yes, I do. Um, no, that was, that was 3.5. We changed 3.4. I we changed that one as well. No, I was 3.4 established and maintains. But 3.5 understands the role of media. I mean, where do we put that? Could that, that just not be a part of suggested data that
We already have perceptions yeah, of the have. district in 3.1. That's what I'm saying. So we could make that a part of suggested data documentation that keep in contact with media to promote positive, yeah, before, pos, you know, what, what we talk about positive perception, perceptions of the district. Mm -hmm. So that could actually be incorporated in 3.1. Can we get rid of 3.5? So the perceptions. And use it as a It should be view. one of the rubrics. Okay, so use this in the rubric. Okay. I would think, be, when you yes. don't even need to say it under, well, yeah, understanding the rule, but how did, but although how would we measure that? Well, we already do. I mean, every time there's a press release, yes. we get an email about the it. Be evidenced by the press release on the website. Yeah. And in the in the paper, I mean, it's evidence, so okay. it could be part of the rubric. Okay. Okay, rubric. Well, we have that as a rubric already. Rubric one is says okay. proactively engages the media, the media to exactly. convey positive okay, good. information so about the three point five can go away. So don't even worry about this. Okay. Right. Okay. So 3.6 then becomes 3.5. Okay. Actually, one of the bullets under C-2, almost to the very end, three up from the bottom, says works cooperatively with representatives of the news media. So it's already incorporated in our rubric under C, your C-2 mm -hmm. here. Okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that someplace. Okay. Join the club. Come on. Do we have C-3? Okay, Mr. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's one o'clock. Uh, can we? Huh? Can we please? Can we take a break? Yes, break. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I feel like this is an exact team meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be. <laughs> we do eat. Okay, well, we for just, pretzels. We so we're done with get three. pretzels for lunch. Are we finished with three? We are finished with three. <laughs> yes. Okay. You can. We're going to take a break. Okay, welcome back. And we'll commence for starting on performance standard number four, organizational leadership. <clears throat> May I make a suggestion that 4.3 makes sound fiscal decisions align with strategic goals, establish clear systems of fiscal control accountability. Can we change that um, performance standard M3? The second bullet point down says collaborative plans and prepares a fiscally responsible budget to support the organization's minute mission and goals. Can we not use that terminology? Well, <coughs> or I would, I would think, yep, I would think that this would be an example of 4.3. Okay. okay. Because it's more than just the budget. Okay. You know? Well, then, it, and then going on down. Demonstrates effectiveness in allocating necessary resources. Mm -hmm. Establishes and uses establishes and uses accepted procedures for receiving dispersing funds. Ensures that expenditures are within the limits approved by the board. That's all 4.3. To mm -hmm. is that is that a bullet point for you? Fiscal control. Yeah, not instructional lines efficiently. And 4.2. Ensures uh, establishes accepted procedures. Demonstrates effectiveness. Support the organizations. Yeah, responsible for the. Um, yeah. So also part of that is 4.2 obtains, allocates, aligns, and efficiently uses fiscal and technology resources. But so Where's second that, so that is that is that is 4.2 on our draft. So that sort of relates to okay. um, that second bullet. But it's all it's all in there. Okay. Um, so why don't we combine those? Yeah, let's see. Up to wait to combine these two. Advocates aligns and official oh, time to see. It's fiscal. It's aligned with strategic goals. It's just clear, transparent systems. <coughs> are they mutually exclusive or can they be combined? I, I, I'm, I'm seeing some things that are, um, that could be combined, but some parts of that I think are important to keep. Okay. So that fiscal control and accountability is not subsumed in 4.2, and I think that's important. Okay. Um, I, I'm okay with both of them, and we okay. can use bullets two, three, four, five. Okay. In the rubric. Okay. 
4.3 when it already pointed to A4 as supporting, <clears throat> adding to the rubric to yes. support that. Yes. Wait a minute, make, let, make, say that one more time. A4. 4.3. Uh -huh. pointed to performance standard A4 as supporting documentation in the rubric. Okay. <clears throat> Along with most of what's on the back side. Right, mm -hmm. stand at four. Right, gotcha. Can all be a part of the ring. Yep. Four. Okay. What'd you say? 4.4? 4. 4. 4. 4. You said what? Three? Three. Three. 4.3. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I think uh, performance in one, whole bunch of those are 4.4. 4. Promoting protective welfare and safety of students and staff. Okay. Um, we've got that facilitating um, classroom management, student discipline, school safety, or orderly environment conducive to teaching and learning. It all falls under in the classroom. We had also put with list that one up to G4 one for 4.4 4. 4. perfect. Promote and protect the welfare and safety of students and staff. And you, you named several. So the first bullet. <coughs> first one. Um, was it? Was it more really than that? Inclusive. Okay, just the four. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. We talked about here. Yeah. I see four point four. Yeah. Okay. And over here. I wonder if um, oh, number two, mm -hmm. okay. communicating okay. expectations yeah. regarding behavior to students, staff, parents, and others okay. that might fit in a rubric. Okay. Um, gotcha. And one under under. Uh, the standard oh, for just come down we'll chat about it. Okay, so that also supports four point four, is that what you're saying? Yes, but I wonder if like that yeah. could fit in the rubric mm -hmm. where you could communicate the expectations okay. to mm -hmm. the students' parents. Because discipline is always a, a fee. The second one is communicating procedures for handling disciplinary problems. I don't know how you really communicate telling you to communicate sounds to me like a rubric issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rubrics are going to be huge. The smaller font. <laughs> With the on. A twenty page document. Oh yeah. time we get done. So <clears throat> one, two, three, four. Implements and enforces school district code of conduct and appropriate disciplinary policies yes. and procedures, I'm thinking is is important. Is that under here or is it under? Here? Well, I think it would go under, it would support 4.4. 4. Okay. What we have in the, down in the rubric under highly effective for 4.4 4. 4 is putting in place systems that create environments that inspire learning and minimize, monitor, and control the probability of unsafe conditions. I don't know where we fit that in. We could, some of this we could actually delete, mm -hmm. delete that because I think these descriptions are better for the rubric than that is. See that that one there. This one. Yeah. And, uh oh, for the probabilities. Probability okay. of unsafe condition. I would take that out and put some of these okay. these disciplinary mm -hmm. ones. In. And you liked collaboratively plans and prepares a fiscally responsible budget to support the organization's missions and goals as opposed to the third one in our draft the one right under the one we just crossed yeah so, okay so make that standard number I'm going to include um, M3 the second um, okay bullet but remember we're including the second the third the fourth and the fifth yes. under that but it's 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 related 
Okay. And so here's some language in our draft that talks about those accountability systems. So clear and transparent systems of financial control and um, accountability are universally followed. Yes. So you'll leave that. That's important. Right. Okay. And are we keeping uh, the first one, establishes clear standard operating procedures that implement it with okay. day to day operations? Yeah. Okay. It is, is it monitors and evaluates? Number one, we say monitors and evaluates the yes. management of day-to-day -day operations, as you're saying. Is evaluates the right thing? That's what I'm getting to say. Monitors and administers the management rather than the word evaluate. 4.1. I, I, I know, and okay. I'm thinking, uh, do we want to say um, implement, apply, um, Yeah, we, we just want to say monitor. Yeah, monitor is the management. Mm -hmm. Or, or, you or how about management. if you just say administers <clears throat> the management of operation of day to day operations? Because you're really the admin. So you want to change monitor and evaluates is included in admi administration. Right. So. Where you had day to day, you're saying something different. So, are we changing some <coughs> language in 4.1? Monitors and evaluates to me could be one word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Administers the management of day to day operations. Something but to that effect. So, that's what I'm saying. We're changing this 4.1. Like so, overseas. The superintendent oversees the management of day-to-day -day operations. But are we keeping operational systems? Oh, or I, are we I, I right. thought we called it day-to-day -day operations. So day -operations. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm going. So we change that mm -hmm. of day-to-day -day -day operations. We're changing that to read overseas the management of day-to-day -day operations. Does she do that, though? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oversees the manage. Oh, she oversees the managers who do the day-to-day. -day. Yeah, okay. So I would, no, I'm not saying she does. I'm just saying she doesn't do the day to day. That's what. Right. She sits okay. in her office and eats bonbons. Yes. yes. Hence my 20 pounds. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, monitors overseas. and overseas. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're, we're working on this. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I think when we finish four, I think we should be done mm -hmm. for the day because okay. we're going to run out of time and we need to go into close for okay. 15 minutes. So, so can we? Let's complete four. Ooh. <coughs> and we complete four. <coughs> Well, 4.3, we had already alluded to <coughs> referring back to A4. Yeah, we were, I thought we were. So we made a little adjustment or revision to 4.1. We were okay. I thought we were okay with 4.2 and 4.3. Mm -hmm. um, Just changed 4. Yes. Point 4. We did that point earlier. 4, we referred back to G4. Yes. All right. Which one? 4.4, 4. we had made references in G4. I think, I think Dr. Keene, if we start to implement the back <coughs> part of Domain M, it's getting into the nitpicking of everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm reading on it. Mm -hmm. Do we actually need to go into great detail? Mm -mm. So some of these, um, yeah, right. So, yeah, like the staff yeah. development you know, all that kind of stuff. Of right. It just, right. You know, it, that's part of day to day. Overseas the planning. Exactly. So do we need to Mm -mm. I'm okay with that. Um, just want to be sure that we want to keep 4.4 as we have it promotes and protects the welfare and safety of students and staff. And then 4.5 ensures that non-instructional staff are focused on their role to support quality instruction and student learning. How to you, me, how that is part that? of day to day. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So, so take so out 4.5. Okay. 
Because and how, how would you how would you demonstrate that? So you know because it's not the superintendent doing all of these things that would be part of what principals okay. are responsible okay. for doing, or whoever the supervisor might be. Of those Does it be? Okay. So we well, we definitely need to keep four point four. Yes. So we're at the um, and then four point four. You wrote down here the support for that. Yeah, we have that is M. Those items that we mentioned here. About yes, the first one, mm -hmm. two, right. three, right. Mm -hmm. four point four. Mm -hmm. okay, we've got that. And then the, the second page of M four M domain M. Again, that was. What all would you want to do with that? Those are too much in the weeds. Just, saying? I think so. It's, it it extrapolates on that, but I just think it's it's already incorporated in mm -hmm. the day to day operations. Well, yeah, that's how I read. You're talking about personnel management too, isn't that in the human resources management mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. section number six, yes. standard six? Yeah. <coughs> Which that could be making human resource standards. You said standard six, yes. Our standard six. Yeah. Are you talking M six? Is that what you're talking about? I'm talking um, M five. Okay. Five fits our standard it's six. It's our standard six. Human resource management. And I think we're rushing for a little bit so. because there is one. So yeah. M four. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, <coughs> seven, and eight, and nine. Okay. The last three bullets under M four, I think, are really need to be in the rubric. Okay. Four four. <coughs> Or 4.4? No, for just what? in the rubric. In the, in the rubric. Rubric for promoting and because, protecting welfare and safety? Um, no, not for, for welfare and safety, but that is part of, I think, your day-to-day. -day. So prioritizing projects, um, evaluating um, that we've achieved our established goals, and communicating with the board our district goals and whatnot. So that supports 4.1 and... Uh, mm -hmm. Is it part of the rubric you're saying? Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you're submitting, putting those in the rubric, if you see the items that we have in there are duplications of that, so we would go first with this, this thing first. <coughs> okay. Okay. We can just cross those off. If they're okay. Too duplicative. Okay. That's okay. And what I could do is I could leave it if there's a question and just strike through so you can see okay. 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 before we take it out. All right. Yeah, we've got 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So what, all right. So what, what process now is we can get an update to this and then we, if we can yeah, just so email what, it to us, we'll. I was going to say what we can do is we can get this in one document mm -hmm. and. <laughs> And, right, exactly, and get it to you so you can start to review. And so by the time, if we're going to do April the April 10th, 10. so by the time we come back, then we can all be working from, you know, at least we know what we've already made decisions on. I will scan this and email it to you tonight. Thank you. And glance uh, at performance. Um, well, six we look seven. at four, make sure we aren't yeah, rushing it too much, yeah, then look at five and six okay. and seven. Okay. Okay. And we'll we talk through this. touch between now and, uh, and April 10th. Right. To finish to finalize this. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. your input. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So you got the. Um, I don't have it. I don't care. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's at the top. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Because since you didn't show up, I'm oh yeah, staff. Okay. I got it. At the top, take yes. out the word council, put staff, mm -hmm. consult with. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Regarding that? Yes. Yeah. Staff. Okay. No, not staff. Um, 
Fantastic. I would say not to not. I would say to discuss pending litigation. That's it. Just plain discuss. Okay. Okay. So may I have a. Uh, well, let me cl clear up. The next item is we will continue the superintendent's evaluation tool in the, our next work session. And um, for item number seven on the on the agenda, future meetings April third, our normal school board meeting. The tenth is a tentatively going to have our work session. Seventeenth is our standard work session. The first of May is the next school board meeting for May, and the fifteenth is school board work session so I hope to get you. back to our two two sessions a month eventually so I make a motion that we accept okay. April 10th as a uh, school board work session from 5 to 8 also okay so a motion is second to establish the April 10th as another school board work session and it will be scheduled from 5 to 8 in the evening 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for clarification to, yes so miss Wright uh, for number three, Ms. Bowman, I call your name, Captain Kelly. Aye. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Lucet? Yes. I have to be in your front Thank you. Okay. And do I have a motion to go into closed session, close open session, and move to closed session? I make a motion to close the open session. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second to close the open session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, I need a motion to move into closed session. Pursuant to the general provisions article 3-305B, the board will go into closed session to conduct collective bargaining and to consult with staff regarding pending litigation. Okay, the motion is second to go into closed session for collective bargaining and regarding pending litigation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Aye.